Hello folks, welcome again. The today's video is about graph builder. It is a tutorial about how to start, how to organize, how to perform this amazing platform that we have in Jump. So to perform this, I have here uh, a data sheet uh, about some characteristics of uh, a machine so we have here 14 columns and 1403 rows we have the year the month the week they were manufactured if they had non-conformities or not how many non-conformities the hp of each one the size of them uh, some losses that they presented during the lab test, the total power, the RPM, the efficiency, that is one of the main goals here, and the noise level that they presented uh, during, during the tests. So, Graph Builder is here, inside of this menu, this part uh, called Graph. So why is it so important uh, to be recorded and to be shared here in our channel? Because this, this uh, tool, uh, it, it's not being thought during the, the Six Sigma trainings, for example. This is a very specific tool, very important tool, but you use in other situation, right? We have a very powerful platform here we can run a lot of different graphs we have different options uh, above here but one thing that i always say to my students during an, any type of six sigma class for example you have to have good uh, questions to be answered if you don't have good questions to, to be answered you start uh, doing, performing a lot of different graphs and you can get lost anytime uh, during these, these uh, performances, during these different graphs that you are, that you are making. So uh, let's start here performing uh, some different graphs using this platform. Here on my left, I have the columns of my table. Here above, we have uh, the different types of graphs that we can perform here. We have different zones uh, in this platform and everything uh, works. Uh, everything works uh, when we select a column here and we drag into these drop zones so if i put this on the y x i have this if i put this in the x axis i have this if i put this here i have another situation here another situation every single part of jump you will have a different type of graph so let's answer one of the first questions that i have noted here how is the efficiency through these different years? So I will just put efficiency here and I will drag into the X, X here the year. So now I have four different uh, cloud of points, let's say. I have this amount of points here, this another uh, amount of points here. Each one is a different year as we can see here uh, below. So, I, do, I don't want this type of graph. I want box plots graph. So, I just, I just click here and now I have different box plots, each one for each year about efficiency. So, now what more can I do here? Let's say, let's say that I would like to know uh, how is uh, the efficiency being performed through these different years 
by different sizes of these these machines. So I, I just drag the size into the zone that I want. If I put size here, I will have a graph separated uh, into A, B, C and D size, like this. If I put this here, I will have this uh, graph uh, is split by the size, but this way of splitting, right? If I put this in the wrap, I, uh, I will have a graph divided into four different zones, A, B, C, and D sizes, okay? So if I put overlay, I have this more, let, let's say, elaborated graph because I have different colors and the legend, the layout uh, of this is here, the label is here, A, B, C and D, each one is a different color, right? So let's say, let's say that you, you want more, you want uh, a graph, the same type of graph, but now you, you want to see the noise level here. So I can add, look, we have this region, this region, and this region. I will put here the below region, let's say, uh, the same type of graph. I have ears, I have noise level, I have different size, and I have another graph inside of the same window. So uh, let's put one more. Let's put here the the total power of the the machines here so now we have uh, three different uh, response variables uh, being compared to different years and sizes let's say that that's it this is your graph you are done you just click here and done and now you can copy this graph you can paste this graph into your uh, reports. If you are not ready, you just you are just seeing how it's gonna be. You can just go there in the red button here and show control panel. Uh, it's important to to notice that everything about legends, colors, uh, scale is uh, scales. Uh, different type of customizations here you can uh, perform inside of this red button. As I always say to my students, we could spend more than two hours easily uh, talking about Graph Builder because it's so complete but it's so complex as well. Okay, uh, what more can we do? What more can we customize here? We can change, for example, if you want to change this middle graph, you don't want uh, box plots here, you want uh, bar charts. So, if you press the control button on your keyboard and you just click here in the middle of this bar chart, the middle of this bar chart, and you split your graph into three zones and the zones you can see here the zone uh, one two and three so one two and three so you just uh, changed the middle of the graph for a bar chart and let's say that you don't want this you want the histogram chart so you with the uh, control uh, pressed on your keyboard, you just click here. So you changed for histogram. And let's say that this graph you wanna put bar charts. You click here in the below part, the, the, the under part of this little graph here. So now you have three different types of graphs on the same graph. And here on my left, you can change the type of uh, those graphs. You can customize them. For example, box, po box plot style, solid. Let's change for solid. 
Let's change the, the bars for kernel density. Let's change the smoothness of this kernel density. Let's change the, the statistic here about years and sizes from mean to minimum value. So we have different statistical uh, summaries being made uh, here. Okay, Mateus, I'm not ready. I'm still not ready. I want to know how uh, are the machines that had non-conformities and the machines that didn't have non-conformities. You can, so you can choose these non-conformities here and put here or you can put here or you can put in different pages. You just put here in this page part and now you have a page for non-conformities and we have another page for machines that had uh, non-conformities. So this is very interesting. Let's take off from here. And another, another thing that I like to show uh, for my students is the local data filter. So let's say that you want to put a filter on this graph. You, ha you have here local data filter. The moment that you choose a data filter, for example, month, I will add a filter about month. I have here the 12 months of the year and the amount of data for each month. The, the moment that I click here, I have a graph for the month the, the month 3 or March. I have a graph for March for each one of these response variables for each year and for each size of the product. So I can add more filters, uh, filters and or I can put here and. So I, I want a filter for month and non-conformities. So I want to know how is the behavior of these response variables for the December month and the models that uh, didn't have non-conformities reported. So now I, I'm done. I have this uh, graph very, very filtered, very customized for your uh, specific situation, okay? So let's come back to the control panel because I want to show you uh, another two or three graphs here that I, that I say that, is, that they are very important. So let's start over. Okay, I'm done. I want to start over. So I want to remove this local data filter and now I want to use this, this mosaic plot here. So I put size here and I just put a nominal variable here. So I have uh, uh, the amount of point for each size of the, the product. And I will put here non-conformities on my y-axis. So what is the size of the motors that had the less uh, amount of uh, non-conformities? Is the size D. Okay, I want to I wanna, uh, make uh, a more specific graph, a beautiful one. This is a beautiful one. Mosaic plot. So we have here uh, this column from size A, okay, this is the larger, the, the most large column because we have more data here and we have a separation between uh, these two colors. The red color, uh, it means that we had non-conformities. The blue color, what is good for us, uh, they, they are the motors that we didn't have non-conformity. So I can change this color. Okay, for me, green is good and red is bad. So now I have this. 
Uh, okay, I, I would like to add some labels. Label by count, label by percent. So uh, from this size D, uh, I, I only had 6.5% of non-conformities. And I can do it for each years, putting here, putting there, and putting here as well. So this is another type of graph that I judge that is very important, very practice, and you can say a lot with only one image. Let's start over. This is an overview uh, tutorial video about Graph Builder. I would like to show you one last uh, graph. This one for my Six Sigma students, I think is very important. Let's say that we, we want to know how, how is the rela relationship between HP and the total power. So I have this relationship between the HP and the total power. And for those that uh, know how to perform linear regression, uh, we are already seeing that we have a relationship. So where can we see the relationship? You can choose this part of the graph builder. This part of graph builder is called line of fit. Jump is trying to fit a line to explain this behavior. So you have here a linear, quadratic or cubic. You can change this. You can put here the R square the equation, the f-test, the prediction, you can put different things here uh, that could explain uh, your, your equation, right? So this is for those who like to, to use linear regression and you can uh, perform this linear regression for each year uh, for each month, for sizes, for everything that you want. Okay, guys? Uh, so that's it. Just a little bit of how powerful is the Graph Builder platform. I really hope that I, that I helped you. If you really like this video and you are not subscribed to this channel, I ask you to subscribe here and uh, follow me and join me in, G in this Tutorial Jump Adventures video. Bye bye guys, see you on the next video.